tamer. <laughs> Something a lot tamer. And this book... But we both felt called to missions before we ever met. Ah, as young children. So, so there was we, no convincing, no selling needed here. There was no hard, it wasn't a hard question for an answer. Will you go anywhere in the world with me to do God's work? But how close to the North Pole have you actually been? 600 miles. I mean... Grease Fjord is the furthest north... Well, no, in actually, Canada. In, in Canada, but in Greenland, it's been Canuck, and that's the north furthest... North of the Thule airplane base. That's the furthest north, I think, in the world. You wouldn't have expected that. No. And when you said, I do. I didn't, and especially flying in the dark. That's the thing that's been the toughest for me. And in Canuck, in January, it's dark 24 hours a day. Mm. In the summertime, it's daylight 24 hours a day. But when we landed at noon hour, it was dark. When we took off two weeks later, at noon hour, it was pitch black. It was such darkness, you could almost cut it with a knife. I was petrified for a few seconds. But he kept flying up. Well, course. I watched the instruments. You looked yeah. outside. I looked outside. <laughs> I couldn't see a thing. This, you know, this is a book of, of uh, real life adventures. And uh, where is it available? Well, you can, we can get it, you can get it from nymministries.org or Hall's Bookstore. Hall's. Uh, In Winnipeg. Hall's Bookstore. Amazon, too. Amazon, a Amazon as Everybody well. knows right. how to do that. I, I, one of the most important things about. Uh, uh, the hairy moments and the fun moments and the unusual family life you've had really is the impact you've had where God has called you uh, to the Aboriginal people who so need the model of family, the, the love of God. Uh, that has been the richest uh, investment. I, I'd like us to see the testimony. Again, we're going back a quarter of a century. Right. Right. Uh, who is the man we're going to hear from? I think he's in Manitoba. Right. Do you remember his name? Mon Monius. John Monius. John Monius. Here's uh, one man uh, impacted by the Schnapps ministry. About well, seven and a half years ago, uh, I uh, was lost in sin. Uh, and then uh, I used to go out on weekends, and I was looking forward for the weekends to come around so that I could go out. And uh, my children, they were smaller, than they started asking me this. Well, Dad, are you going to drink this weekend? Are you going to be gone this, the whole weekend? And, you know, that started to make me think. So I started to uh, think a lot of things that uh, I never thought of before. The importance of being with your children. They gave their lives to the Lord first before I did. And that was the, that was the turning point of my life, too. You know, I, I thought uh, if they were going to walk for the Lord, then I would, uh, they needed somebody to, get, to guide them in their home. So, uh, you know, through them, I, I became to know Christ as my personal Savior. And then from then on, we just lived, uh, we tried to live a good, uh, you know, the way the Lord wants us to live in a family, as a family. That's Any fathers and men back to the place. Exciting. Oh, I'm just, I'm just hearing the fruit of, uh, now we'll start with the bad news first. There was one Inuit man I read about living near the Arctic Circle. His first name, was E3-890. That was his name. E for Eskimo. Right. Three was the treaty region, right. and he was the 890th Eskimo tagged. Right. Um, the so issue of numbers. identity, uh, the healing needed. Oh, yes. This is just one example. Right. Uh, you know the man I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. We were just there, spent a whole week there last week. Just last week. And what? And how is he doing today? Just fantastic. And that was such a special week again last week. Actually, we stayed in their house. And he's part of a men's group. It's a men's movement touching the whole Kilowick region. And that's what, that's what really is needed for the men to rise up and be men, men of God. You were careful not to overstay your welcome. Your mission has always been to encourage and equip and let go. go. Well, just Only like we once. had to do with our girls. Only once in 50 years did they say, I think you've been here long enough, Claire, now. <laughs> <laughs> you only had to and be told once. I like once. that. I yeah. like that. He that's, was honest. That's the kind of honesty that we like to have. Uh, who was the other man I was reading about? Uh, Cree leader. Howard Jolly, uh, who now pastors the First Nations Alliance Church in Winnipeg. He holds an MDiv degree from Providence Theological Seminary. 
you two counseled him 20 years ago. He said, you helped me see the mercy of God for the first time. I thought of God as strict and condemning, but I learned that God is compassionate and that we are very dear to him. That's right. This is the kind of nurture and heart change that you've been all about for 50 years. And I hope that someday, maybe rising above, which Howard is part of, can be um, hosted, here. hosted here. Because it's one of the very, very special ministries across Canada, rising above, uh, that the First Nations men are doing, men and women are doing. Rising above issues of abuse. Uh, and the whole conferences in Winnipeg, Vancouver, Ottawa, Montreal. And the next one will be in Winnipeg. Next this one. May. Well, this is a partial answer to the question on my heart. What kind of response have you seen oh, amongst God. Aboriginals to the Prime Minister's apology in 2008? Well, it was a powerful apology. It touched every Aboriginal person in Canada. And it made many weep and it changed their attitudes. It was a very necessary move on the part of the government, and it was received very well by the Aboriginal peoples. At least and the just, ones we know of. Well, yeah, at least the ones we know of.